Hello. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Kevin Lowe. I'm the GM of Google Fiber, and it's uh, rare that you see me out in public. I'm the guy that keeps the trains running, so they usually keep me locked away in the back room. Um, but it's my pleasure to be here with you guys here today. So first off, Fiber is a, is a pretty hot topic here. Um, this year, and especially across many different locations. Here in the EU, the Commission's been looking at how to become a connected continent. In many places around the world, um, we're seeing fiber to the home networks uh, become increasingly available to consumers. Uh, the NBN in Australia, the to be announced Gigatown in New Zealand. Um, in many cities across America, uh, especially some of the ones that we work at um, through our Google Fiber project, uh, it's been really exciting to see that happen over the past year. As people's broadband needs outgrow the existing copper networks, and as telcos and content providers today are looking at how to pay for these types of upgrades, I think it's really appropriate for, for me here today um, to touch briefly on a few of the reasons why my company, Google, is really excited about making the investments in building fiber networks, and especially ones that, that go directly into the home. Um, so. With that, I'd like to start with a myth that I hear quite a bit. Um, and that myth is that consumers don't want, won't pay for, or don't need high-speed broadband. Um, and in our particular case, it's gigabit, or symmetric gig, connectivity. Based on our experience, I can say with full confidence that simply isn't true. There is huge consumer demand out there for faster internet, and we believe that faster internet speeds will lead to what we refer to as the next chapter of the internet. And just like the last step function improvements in speed, going from dial-up to broadband, and that brought about all the current applications that we use today, from streaming video, um, photo sharing, video conferencing online, we're confident that the next 100x improvement in speeds will lead to more innovation. And our goal at Google is really to give our users and entrepreneurs alike ubiquitous access to high-speed broadband. And we know that they'll rise to that occasion and build those next set of gigabit applications that we can't even imagine at this point in time. So, but for the next few minutes, um, just for the sake of argument, let's forget about the future of the internet and think about how users today are interacting on the web. At Google, we've seen this firsthand for years, how fast and speedy internet access really impacts what people do day to day and impacts their behavior and how they, how, they, how they make choices about where they spend their time. People will actually walk away from the web when it's too slow. If you see this, do you walk away? Well, studies show that 80% of people of online video watchers do walk away when they see the loading bars. Similarly, 11% of potential customers will walk away from a website if it loads just one second too slow, or meaning with a one second delay in the page loads. And we see this at Google as well. We once ran an experiment where we slowed down the search results by just a blink of the eye, and it resulted in a significant reduction in the number of searches that users do. We've also seen that things people love to do on the web increasingly require more and more bandwidth. Every, every minute, users upload 100 hours of content onto YouTube. 72% of US gamers play their games online. 51% of adults do banking online. 46% of Americans upload and share photos. And 37% of teenagers participate in web chats online, uh, sorry, video chats online. All of these percentages have grown steadily over the last five years. And when these high bandwidth applications load quickly, people spend more time using them. In fact, I don't know if you knew this, but at Google, a few years back, we rebuilt maps so that it would load faster. And after that, we found that people spend 25% more time on maps. So. Knowing that users love and want faster broadband connections or faster speeds, we wondered if we could deliver them a faster web, not just in the products that we build,
but also in the user's connection to the web itself. And that's the question that prompted us to issue a request for a proposal back in 2010. We effectively asked America which cities would be interested in working with us to build a gigabit city or gigabit network in their city. And we were overwhelmed by the response. There were 1,100 cities and over 200,000 individuals that applied as a part of that process. And that's when we got the message loud and clear. There is a need for speed from users um, and cities in America. And that's why we decided to build our gigabit, uh, our gigabit data service and TV service for, can for users in Kansas City. And since that time, we've expanded to Austin, Texas, and then Provo, Utah. And as it turns out, we're not the only ones that are noticing users want more bandwidth and are responding. Um, over the past year, several other ISPs in America have started offering gigabit services to their customers. And even companies who said publicly that they don't believe that users will want higher speeds um, have started to raise their speeds and lower prices in Google Fiber markets. And these companies have seen the same things that we did. Customers want faster internet at affordable prices. And we're thrilled that the customers are getting more, um, whether it's from Google Fiber or any other provider. Now, I don't have to tell you in the room that building a fiber network is actually very, very complicated and takes a lot of time. Um, but there's a lot of planning, design, construction that goes into fiber, and also we have to work with local cities before we can even put boots on the ground to start construction. I wanted to highlight one quick point that I think is obvious, but it's really apparent when you actually start this process. The existing telecommunications infrastructure, certainly the one in the US, was built bit by bit over the course of a century. So it's likely that many of the cities out there have never, ever experience the kind of scale and pace associated with building an entire telecommunications infrastructure in the, type of, in the type of time frame that we're talking about. And that's why our first step when we wanted to build Google Fiber in our cities was to sit down with the cities and make sure that they were actually comfortable and able to support that type of pace. In fact, the secret isn't in tax breaks or local incentives. Um, we found that it was actually three different things that really jumped out for, for us. The first was access to infrastructure. In order to build a network like ours, we actually have to physically string fiber up on poles and pull fiber through conduit when we're going underground. Now, we all know the obvious. It's simply not feasible for every new provider to put up new poles and rip up roads. And it's actually a terrible waste of resources when you're putting a brand new pole next to an existing pole uh, in the street or, or, ripping, or, or digging up roads unnecessarily. And so the first thing that cities can do to encourage new investment in fiber infrastructure is simply focus on making existing infrastructure assets like poles, like ducts, like conduit available to new providers. And in these situations, when we work with our cities, we sit down with them, the, the applicable local utility and the telcos, we identify the poles that we can get access to, and then we agree on a fair market price that we can pay uh, on a leased basis to get up on that space. The second thing that cities can really do that we really ask for when we work with a fiber city is getting access to, oops, is getting access to local maps. Once we get permission to lease that space, it's really, really important for us to be able to get accurate maps, not just of the existing elect uh, poles, electricity poles and conduit, but more importantly of the water mains, the gas lines that are typically buried underneath. Um, it sounds obvious that in order to build safely, you would like to have that information, but we've been very surprised by how big of a problem this actually is for a lot of our cities. And finally, the third thing that we really focus our time and energy on now is the ability to get expedited construction permits. Um, when we build in many of our cities, we are submitting quite literally tens of thousands of permits. We comply with those permitting codes. Um, we work closely with the city to figure out a way to expedite that process. But practically speaking, um, these are the kinds of things that have been consuming our, te our team's time. In addition to the lessons that we've learned 
that we've just outlined here today, the Fiber to the Home Council has also published a report that really helps cities figure out how to be more, quote-unquote, fiber-friendly and really prepare themselves for the type of discussion um, if you want to encourage new entrants to come into your market and build out a fiber infrastructure. In fact, if you haven't read it yet, I'd highly recommend that. And actually, one of the most interesting recommendations they made was to coordinate pole maintenance with make-ready um, work in order to be more efficient and to save costs. So often, there are two sets of crews that actually touch these poles, one set for the maintenance and the other set that do and execute the make-ready to prepare a pole so that we can string fiber up on there. And so their recommendation was literally, why wouldn't you coordinate this where possible? It saves a lot of time. You eliminate the duplicate parties that are going up on the same pole, uh, within, sometimes within a matter of weeks. Now, it's a novel idea, but this is something that I would lump into this bucket of low-hanging fruit. Um, local governments can play a very, very large role in reducing the complexities of building new fiber networks. And going back to this connected continent um, topic, I think it's worth noting that Europe's making very good progress in this area. In fact, earlier this year, the European Commission released a draft regulation on measures that reduce broadband deployment costs. That regulation addresses access to physical infrastructure, conduit, ducts, poles, and other issues related to construction of networks. Um, we welcome the Commission's proposal, and um, you know, based on our experiences in building fiber in Kansas City, we know firsthand that these issues really, really matter. And so we're really glad that the Commission's focusing its, intention, or focusing its attention on a win-win solution that creates substantial societal benefit without, introdu or without increasing uh, or introducing new costs. Um, and I think, in fact, their analysis indicated they, they thought it would save 30% of the investment cost itself from a lot of these regulatory construction measures. So, policymakers can attract fiber investments and make it much easier for ISPs to build. And on the other hand, we know that users want faster networks. So when you combine the two together, um, our belief is that this could be a really good business both for you as well as for the communities that you serve. In Kansas City, we've seen firsthand how fiber has already impacted the local economy by boosting tech jobs and opportunities on one hand, and second, by making internet access more ubiquitous and more affordable on the other hand. So earlier this year, the state of Missouri, and that's where Kansas City is located, um, they outpaced California, Texas, and New California, Texas, and New York in terms of tech jobs created. Now, this is surprising since the American Midwest, where Kansas City is located, is not traditionally considered a tech hub like Silicon Valley. But fiber has really helped to mobilize and motivate a set of local entrepreneurs. And that area has really attracted a lot of talent. I'll give you one example. In Kansas City, um, there's one neighborhood um, called uh, Kansas City Startup Village. And in the last year, 25 startups have formed there. Many of these people have moved from other parts of the country to take advantage of both the gigabit connectivity as well as having users connected with gigabit. That's really the important piece. But take advantage of the gigabit community as well as also to participate in that local, um, in, in that local environment. And thanks to all the national press attention, we now have venture capitalists and other investors who funded a number of these entities. That influx of funding and startups has, in turn, helped the overall local economy. In fact, also earlier, I think it was late last year, Fitch, which is a debt rating company, upgraded um, Kansas City, Missouri's debt rating itself, citing Google Fiber as one of those reasons for it. One of the other things that we've learned is that Google Fiber is even improving the web for those who aren't users of our service. For example, as I mentioned earlier, several of the ISPs in the areas have increased speeds and lowered prices. And affordable internet access has also become a really hot topic in the local environment. And we've seen a large number of startup or of nonprofits who've come together um, to really focus on issues like the digital divide. In fact, recently, in the last, uh, within the last two or three months, 
a number of Kansas City companies have now raised over a, bi over a million dollars and are funding local digitally or digital inclusion efforts. And these local examples are wonderful. Like, they're really, really wonderful examples of how community-driven local solutions can make a really big impact in lessening the digital divide. And so, as I first mentioned when I got up here, fiber is clearly a hot topic across the globe. Users want higher bandwidth, and governments around the world are responding to lower the barriers um, for construction and investment in new infrastructure. Now, my team's only been working on this for a few years, and we're still learning how to work with communities. But in that short time, we've really been surprised and impressed with the impact that fiber connectivity and faster internet can really have on a community. We can't wait to see how fiber to the home is implemented in other cities, both in the U.S. and hopefully um, in other cities around the world. Thank you so much for your attention today. I think, uh, I'm not sure if I have a few minutes, but maybe take some questions or...